So what we have shown is that we started with a span of these vector fields which was some distribution. We said that it is involutive. By involutivity we were able to show that in the first step that you can transform it to some new vector fields which commute that is their Lie brackets are 0. The new set of vector fields have 0 Lie brackets. Then you are able to show that the original vector fields can be transformed by a state coordinate transformation to E1 to Ek and finally that you can get annihilator vector fields uh, Hj in the original coordinates. In the new coordinates anyway you have the Gjs but you can get the Hj's in the original coordinates also which are basically the annihilators right and these are exactly going to be the addition the Hj's are going to be the additional coordinates that we after relative degree r we have to construct some n minus r coordinates these are exactly those okay. So what are we left with the converse I said that involutivity and complete integrability are equivalent. So we are left with just proving the converse okay and that is what is this guy okay all this does is proves the opposite side of things yeah uh, anyway so we are we do not have to look at this but the converse proof is pretty straightforward. Once you have complete integrability, proving invertibility is not difficult uh, because complete integrability not just tells you the existence of these h functions, it also gives you that these dh corresponding to these h functions are linearly independent. Okay, So you have enough to claim uh, involutivity in fact. All right. So what is uh, where we wanted to focus was what is the implication on feedback linearization okay. Uh, if you remember we started with a system like this yeah single input system yeah so we had only an f and a g all right. Now suppose I claim that this distribution which I have constructed in a rather interesting way that is its span of g add f g all the way to add f k minus 1 g okay is non singular and involutive okay. suppose this happens okay i mean we'll see why or <laughs> why we have constructed it like this but these are my f1 to fk huh? i don't need actually separate f1 to fk this is my f1 f2 all the way to fk okay I am just constructing it out of the ingredients I have here. Right. Suppose this happens, I know by Frobenius theorem that delta is now an integrable uh, distribution. All right. What does that mean? It means the existence of these h functions. Right. How many? n minus k, exactly n minus k. And with what condition that this happens? I just wrote f1 to fk, huh? this is just f1 to fk, add f 0 g, add f 1 g all the way to add of k minus 1 g, yeah, that is f1 to fk yeah? and hj is all of these, okay. Does this condition look similar? The same like lemma 0 0.1, 0 0.2, this is all, this is the kind of stuff we had, okay. What is this? I am expanding this, let me expand this thing now. Hmm? I am expanding not just this one but all of them okay. so there are many how many are there how many conditions are n times k conditions right this is because there is k here and n minus sorry let us see uh, n minus k times k conditions right I believe this is n minus k times k conditions right because there are that many huh? I am going to expand them how in this way okay. Uh, because I just, I am just writing the Lie brackets, I am not doing anything, huh? I am just writing the Lie brackets itself. This is del h1 del x, del h2 del x all the way del h n minus k del x. What is the dimension of this guy? n minus k rows and n columns, yes, because each of them is a row vector, each is a row vector, each is a row vector and multiplied by this vector field. That is, I write all of them, add f0 g, add f1 g 
all the way to add of k minus 1. What is the dimension of this? n cross k. Why? Because this is a vector field, n dimensional, n dimensional and there are k such elements. So, n cross k. What is the product? How, what is the dimension of the product? n minus k cross k, right? That is the, that is as many conditions that I have, right? So, what I have done? I have taken this one small condition and written it in this matrix form. Do you remember this matrix? We had no? Huh? We had, right? Huh? In 0 0.1, 0 0.2 lemma, these are the, this is the sort of matrix we have been looking at, right? Very familiar to us, okay? So, again, different looking, right? But very similar, I mean, I mean, just this thing inside has dh1, dh2 and all that, right? Other than that, this guy is exactly the same, R is just replaced by K, all right? Otherwise, exactly the same. What am I showing now? There I used it for a different purpose, but you see I am going back and forth to the same sort of expression. That is the important thing to remember. All right, great. But now integrability further tells me something that these guys are linearly independent. Right? That's, that is the meaning of complete integrability and Frobenius theorem gave me complete integrability for free by involutivity. Okay, excellent. So, what does it mean? dh1, dh2 all the way to dh n minus k are linearly independent. What does it mean? This thing has to be rank n minus k. Yeah, because they are each row is linearly independent, right? So, of course, this entire matrix cannot have rank more than n minus k. This is rank n minus k, okay? So, uh, so obviously, what do we have? Now, uh, this is, this guy is of course 0, okay? No problem. So, what we are now saying is that these h1 to hn minus k become my uh, new coordinates. So, in, so, relative degree is actually not n minus k, relative degree is relative degree is k, right? Not n minus k. N, n minus k are these additional coordinates that we construct in which the control will not appear, right? Obviously, control will not appear because if I take derivative of h1 of any hi for that matter, uh, wait a second, yeah, h i dot, I get L f h i plus L g h i u, yeah, so 0, okay, so there is no control in this, okay, and so on and so forth, yeah, you basically get these new additional coordinates like I told you, right, these h are what become your additional coordinates when you are looking at partial feedback linearization, okay. Now, um, I do not have anything here, I have something else there, but what does, I mean it is important, nice to also wonder what does involutivity of this vector field mean, of, of this delta mean, okay. What does the involutivity of these guys mean, okay. Involutivity means that if I take Lie bracket between any two of these, any two, then that has to be in the span. So, suppose I actually see, try to look at that, okay, try to see if it really happens, right. So, if I take uh, say Lie bracket of G and add F G, what is this? Is this anything that we know? So, what is add F G by the way? Add F G is, yeah, add basically gives the successive Lie brackets, right, okay. So, uh, what does this give me? What do you think happens here? So, we have to do the entire computation, right? We have to do a little bit of the computation. This is a little bit complicated, yeah? Let us see if we can. Let us give it a shot. Yeah? You and I have not tried it. So, this is uh, d add f g g minus d g add f g. Yeah. Okay. Let us see. Does this help us in some way? Can I simplify this further? Or this is it? Hmm. Apparently not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I was thinking we will have to simplify this further, but no, does not look like I can simplify this further. Okay. 
so i will see i am just going to make that remark uh, cannot i was thinking if there is some nice expression or simpler expression that will come out of it but doesn't look like it not on the face of it unless one of you can work it out and tell me but i don't think it's turning out to be sing, uh, any further simpler yeah what this condition is is that this is essentially the relative degree condition see what you were doing is uh, what we were doing is we were basically taking the output a particular output all right remember the entire feedback generation that we were doing until now was relying completely on a particular output okay what if you don't know what is that output how do you verify if you have any relative degree and feedback generation and things like that yeah then you have to use this kind of a method where now you notice this is not dependent on any output this condition so what you have to do is you have to if you have a single input system here like this and you have no idea what output you can choose that will give you some feedback generation because otherwise you can do bunch of trials and errors right you will have to check these vector fields or this distribution yeah and what will you have to do you have to verify that this distribution is non singular which means what that each of these are linearly independent for all arguments p at every point they give you linear independent vector okay that is what it means for this to be non singular okay and involutive you will have to actually check that they are involutive okay unfortunately it is not obvious that it is still giving you any output yeah at the end of this exercise if you see it's not uh, very easily evident what is the output that you can use okay but when we are doing the full state feedback generation you will see that it becomes very easy to find the output using this method also so basically this gives you a method of like sort of finding that output that will give you a feedback generalized system yeah here uh, not so much i'll also have to see how to get the output here uh, one thing that's sort of evident here is that these coordinates that i got right if i keep taking successive derivatives all right um so i take the first derivative i get no control all right no problem i take a second derivative i will get what lf square h i right i'll get an lf square h i no control again right but similarly if i take k minus 1th derivative i'll get lf k minus 1 h i right and still no control okay until this point here yeah when i take the kth derivative right uh, so this is this is basically add f0 in 1 so yeah in the kth derivative of hi i will get add f k minus 1 g hi yes this is also i believe zero right correct because by this this guy is also zero right but if i take h i k plus 1 okay then the control will show up okay but uh, that is still vague yeah it's not evident that that is a good choice or not okay uh, so i'm just commenting on the fact that this hi's themselves could also lead to feedback generation yeah the the output that will give you feedback generation okay not just as the extra out extra states okay one way to look at them is that they are the extra states right but they could also lead you to the output that will give you feedback generation okay so it's not very evident here because you need additional conditions you need to know that l add f k g hi is actually non zero that condition is not being uh, you know posed anywhere here yeah you need that the higher derivatives actually have non zero input so that does that happen or not is not very clear in this case okay so um, anyway so this is the uh, implication of frobenius theorem in partial feedback generation basically it comes into play when you don't have an output which you can keep taking derivatives of off and try to find the control 
yeah you may not have a suitable output in those cases you can actually directly use the vector fields of the system itself and the frobenius theorem to see what is the relative degree of the system it is not very obvious in the case of partial linearization that how to find this output okay this will give you the relative degree but how to find the output is still a little bit of a jugglery at this stage okay now um, if you go to the full state linearization then something more can be done okay that's what we want to look at now all right so we are again back to the notion of integrable distributions don't worry about it this is a repetition i already told you that um, if you have a distribution which is a span of some vector fields right uh, then if you think of annihilator theory you are looking at some y's which are annihilating each of these yeah that's essentially what we have the dh for okay so that's what it's mentioned here in a just in a different notation please don't worry about it again um you say that the distribution is uh, completely integrable if it is annihilated by these n minus r lambdas okay this this is just different notation yeah uh, going from h to lambda yeah of course you also know what is involutivity i'm not going to uh, actually stress on it again so we want to look at now the conditions under which you can completely feedback linearize okay we've already looked at the condition by the way there is nothing very big about it we already looked at partial feedback linearization so when k becomes uh, you know when this k becomes n you have complete feedback linearization all right that's it right because we already looked at the case when for arbitrary k so if k becomes n it is completely feedback linearizable and that's what we are writing here yeah uh, this again for this particular system uh, x dot is okay doesn't mention here but this is again for the system assumed is still x dot is f of x plus yeah for this system actually i apologize this should be this section for this section this is the case yeah all right so what have we done uh, we are talking about some necessary and sufficient conditions uh, right and we are constructing this matrix okay g add of g add of n minus 2 add of n minus 1 okay we want this to be rank n what is this matrix same thing that we constructed right just taking k equal to n right same deal what because what does it do if if all these are linearly independent then you get a non singular you know a non singular distribution all right so what that's the first requirement that this has rank n yeah he is talking about a particular you know uh, point x0 okay but typically you will want it for all x0 okay um all right okay great so this this is rank n is the same condition that we saw before because this is what gives you the distribution delta okay right next now we are looking at the distribution here well fine in this particular case the one of them is removed from the distribution okay in this particular case the distribution is removing one term okay this is for a particular reason for a very specific reason we'll look at it subsequently all right so the distribution is not spanned by g add of g all the way to add of n minus 1 g but we are going only until uh, add of n minus 2 g okay all right so we are asking for the distribution to be involutive just like before okay so same conditions we are creating a distribution based on the vector fields in the system which is f and g right using the f and g we have constructed this you know distribution and we want it to be non singular and involutive all right and um, yeah that's it we want it to be non singular and involutive and of course we have also said that for non singularity we have sort of added this additional term here 
okay we have added this additional term here all right uh, here the h function or the lambda function is used in a slightly different way okay that's what i want to highlight now uh, i hope this is clear can you do you see the identity between this and what we did in the partial linearization are you completely lost you see what we are doing here at least i hope you can see that these expressions are very similar okay otherwise we are just trying to apply the frobenius theorem which is saying that if your distribution is involutive it is completely integrable and complete integrability means i get these functions h okay and i want to do something with those functions h okay we don't know what what we want to use them as but we want to use those functions h because they have some you know these nice properties which is basically uh something like this uh, annihilator type properties okay so that's really the whole plan all right so let's see um even if we forget what we have looked at earlier let's look at this in a separate context so we have taken these vector fields okay and again we'll also try to look at some examples of course uh and we are saying that these vector fields are uh independent and therefore rank n and further now we construct a distribution out of all of them but one so the last one i have removed okay so now this has only n minus 1 vector fields so what will be the dimension of this distribution what would be the dimension of this distribution if it's a non singular distribution because i already said g add of g these are all linearly independent yeah so what would be the dimension of this distribution how many vectors does it have n minus 1 okay and and what is the size of each vector n so this is an n by n minus 1 if you look at it in matrix form is n by n minus 1 right so what what can be what is the rank of this distribution then n minus 1 cannot be more than that yeah n is larger anyway okay so the idea is that uh, rank of d is n minus 1 this is why i have the non singularity okay i have already assumed involutivity okay so i can immediately invoke the frobenius theorem and say that it is completely that this distribution is now completely integrable because it is non singular and involutive okay 